OK, so now we have created our lakeside animation. And again, we could, like I said, go a lot further with this. We could start adding in text uh, and animating that like you would everything else with position values or scale, etc. Where we see a stopwatch, we can animate and so, so much. So again, go crazy. But once you've done your animation, we need to look at how do we actually export this to play um, on a 360 or VR player. Now, unfortunately, uh, After Effects isn't very good at exporting um, 360 content. Uh, so there is a few little things we've got to do annoyingly. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Add to Media Encoder. And this will open up our Media Encoder program. I always do it this way just because it gives us more options uh, for format. If I try and export it within the render queue, um, it makes the file sizes larger unnecessarily. Um, and it can also remove certain uh, information that we actually want to keep. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually export it or render it from Media Encoder first, uh, keeping the source files the same. So again, sorry about that error. My computer just has missing a plugin, that's all. So wait for this to uh, appear in our queue. There we go. So making sure I've got my actual composition. So I'm working on the one I've been editing. I don't want to export the, the VR output ones. I want to make sure I'm only exporting the one I've been working on. Um, if I try and export the VR edit ones, we won't actually get the format you expect. It will just export it as a sphere, um, but it will not be right. It will not work. It will just look weird. Trust me on that. So we're going to export our working file, so where we've created all our animations. And I'm going to, in Media Encoder, make sure I keep the preset to match source high bitrate. So this will keep everything the same as our project file is created as. I'm going to select a save location. So in this case, I'm just going to save it to my uh, second hard drive. And I'm going to hit play to start the rendering. Now, this will take some time, uh, annoyingly, because uh, when working with 360 or uh, sort of file sizes of this size, it can sometimes be a strain on your computer, especially if you're trying to do this on the laptop. So just bear that in mind. And what you see, what we've created is actually something very simple, but it's already saying it could take half an hour to an hour in some cases. And in fact, the first time I rendered this out, it took um, about 45 minutes. It looks like this is actually going to be a lot quicker, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, once this is exported, we're going to then need to take this into Premiere Pro and add in our encoding metadata, which we'll need for things like YouTube or Facebook to recognize it as a 360 file. So we'll skip to when that animation has finished rendering. OK, so now our, to now our animation has rendered out, we are going to open up Premiere Pro. I'm just going to create a new project. I'm going to keep all the settings here to default. It doesn't really matter too much what these are for the purposes of what we're doing with this. I'm going to create this one as 360 Lake Animation. Again, you can cause whatever you want. Just hit OK. And again, we're just waiting for this to uh, kind of kick into action. And I'm going to go to where I exported my animation. So in this case, I exported it into my documents. I'm going to drag my animation file that I've just rendered out, which is a flat video, into Premiere Pro, like so, into my project window. I'm going to right click on it first, go to Modify, Interpret Footage making sure that VR properties um, are conformed to, because you notice here we've got no projection taken to it, so After Effects doesn't export the projection type. We've got to conform it to Echo Rectangular by 360 by 180 monoscopic. Press OK. And then we're going to click and drag this onto this little page icon here, which is for new timeline sequence. And now we should have our video inside here. You'll notice this version's actually got some text in. This is just one that I actually added a little bit more work to. I put a sun in, I just put some text. It didn't take that long. Everything else principally was the same. I'm going to go over here to the button editor, and I'm just going to make sure that I've added the toggle VR display 
option to my button layout down the bottom. And this is indicated by the circle with this little rectangle in the middle. I'm going to click on that. And if my uh, metadata is correctly in there, I should have this window like so. It gives me this one by one view, which actually is uh, not what we're after. So I'm going to click on the little settings icon, go to video, VR video settings, and I'm going to change this angle to be 160 by 90 or 16 by 9, essentially, and hit OK. So now this is the emulation or kind of preview of how it will look on YouTube. So if I start rotating around, I can rotate around all the angles, I can look up and down. If I hit play, the animation would play and like so. But this time it actually includes the metadata. So when we actually export this um, into uh, our VR video player, it'll actually understand what format it is. So I can preview it in here. But if I want to export, I need to make sure I come back out of this view by clicking toggle VR display. So I'm back to the sort of default view here. I'm going to go to file. Export. I could also, by the way, edit the video, obviously, and add sound, etc. here. I'm not going to do that because, again, that's not needed for this tutorial. I'm going to go to File, Export, Media. This will bring up a window. Like so. I'm going to make sure the format is H.264, preset, match, source, high bitrate again. But I'm going to scroll down to where it says video and just make sure that the VR video, video is VR, is enabled. Frame layout is monoscopic. Field of view 360 by 180. Maximum render quality. Choose a output name. Press save. Then I hit export, and this will now render out my video. And that's it. Once that has been rendered out, we can then go onto YouTube or Facebook or any service that allows you to play back 360 content and within possibly an hour sometimes, depending on um, how uh, large your file is and how much uh, checking has to be done, you'll find that your content will then be 360 enabled and people will be able to look around in VR headsets or with their phone, um, as you'd expect. And that's it. That's the simple principle of 360 animation. Uh, I haven't gone into depth or even touched on things like audio, because again, audio is, um, could, would, could, you could do in After Effects or in Premiere, it's up to you. And um, I've avoided anything like masking or areas I've covered in the other videos I've done as part of this 360 series. Uh, if you have any queries, remember to just email them to the email address in the description down below. And I thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.